Hello, hello. My name is Erin Fugate. I am one of the founding members of the Visionary Leaders Collective, and I am here with Haley Jones. Do you want to say hi, Haley? Hello, everyone. And we are talking about why we love in-person classes and how to rock them. Because guess what? Is anyone like me? And you haven't really taught an in-person class in a few years. <laughs> Is anybody else? I've taught a few, but when I started my doTERRA business, my rule was at least one class a week, baseline. And then I would get booked to, you know, someone would host a class or I'd have another class. So when I was building my doTERRA business, I would have like three classes a week. And that's how you build. That's how you build. So then we got hit in 2020 with this pandemic. And suddenly we weren't teaching in person classes. And so I want to start by sharing a little bit about what that's been like for me and what I've been going through and kind of what I've been going through as I try to get back to in-person classes. Haley's going to do the same. And then we want to hear from you. We want to hear what is currently coming up for you. What's stopping you from teaching in-person classes? What are your concerns? What are your fears? Kind of what do you need help with? We'll talk to quite a bit of that. And then we have a few bullet points that we really wanna hit in this class. We wanna make sure you know how to schedule and promote a class. We wanna make sure you know how to make sure people come. We want you to keep it super simple and fun so you don't feel exhausted or uh, overextended. We wanna make sure you know how to facilitate people actually purchasing the oils. We wanna to talk to you about kind of like backing into your income goal so you can have an income goal with your classes how to book classes off of classes. So you get people hosting classes that you never would have um, normally met, how to find your next builders, leaders at your classes. And most importantly, cause it's me and Haley, you're gonna have fun doing it. So does that sound like a, a good webinar tonight that everybody is up for? Yes. Okay, so 2020, not only was a pandemic for me, but it was also, we had a huge fire in my town and I'm extremely lucky that I still have my home and I didn't have to evacuate. And I gave birth to my second child. So when the pandemic hit, if I'm being really honest, I was kind of happy for the break, right? Like, whew, a lot going on. I don't, I don't want to be teaching three classes a week right now. So I was like, ooh, I'm going to take, you know, this little break. That's okay. As the pandemic has gone on, I have felt uncomfortable getting back to teaching classes because there's a lot of moving parts, right? Like, am I worried about getting sick? Is are somebody else going to get sick? Are people going to want me to wear a mask and not want me to wear a mask? Is there going to be a conversation about my vaccination status? Like all these, these what ifs. And I'm already stressed out because there's been a pandemic and I'm a mom of two and I'm a survivor of a traumatic event. So it's just like, oh, I can't even handle can't even handle teaching classes. I also have been worried that my networking has slowed down because of the pandemic. So do I even have people who would come to classes? And then honestly, like I'm a little socially awkward now. Does anybody else feel that way? Like I kind of get around other people. I'm like, how, how do we, how do we, can, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just out of practice and I'm uncomfortable. But the truth is, is I miss people and I miss in-person classes. And this has been the fun of doTERRA for me. I've been doing doTERRA for 14 years and I built my business doing events, all kinds of interesting events. So I am having this webinar a little bit selfishly, but because I need you all to just be my accountability buddies and it's more fun if we do it together because I wanna get back to teaching in-person classes. And I'm hoping that we can do this a little bit like a collaborative workshop where we figure out how to do this again and we have fun doing it and we can work through some of those fears and concerns. So that's me, Haley, where are you? I, same place, I'm glad you addressed the elephant in the room because I think maybe some people avoided coming to this webinar because they're like, oh God, no, am I gonna teach a class again in person? It's like terrifying after years off of not doing it, right? Or we get so comfortable doing it on Zoom with our like fake background so nobody sees the clutter in our houses. And it's just been like a weird time. So I'm glad you put that out there because there definitely was that whole thing in, in the room. 
But for me, it's very similar concerns. All of those questions that come up for people, will you wear a mask, will you not, your vaccination status, all of that. But also some people just aren't comfortable gathering yet. And some people are super comfortable gathering. So then there's the line of boundaries between people. And so it's just like a weird time. It's a weird time to navigate. It's a weird thing to have to relearn. We've learned a lot about how to teach classes in a certain format. And it just doesn't really fit the mold anymore. We kind of have to adapt and change it. And so I think that addressing a little bit more casual kind of way of teaching with people and a little bit more, I don't know, inspiring way, creative way to bring value to people because these are such valuable things. We just don't know how to talk about them anymore because the old way wasn't, isn't really working anymore. So I think it's great that we're having this class because we need to talk about how do we get back in the world and how do we meet the needs of the people that aren't comfortable gathering right now? And so I think that this will be great. It's also hard teaching classes and it's tiring. And sometimes we don't have the energy to do it. So we're like, nah, I'll just sit at home instead. <laughs> so I think that it's good to get inspiration from all of us as a community and collaborate together. Yes, yes. Okay, so the first like, um, you know, disclaimer here is you are your own person. You get to decide if you feel comfortable teaching in-person classes or not. So if you're on this webinar and you're like, I don't feel comfortable gathering in person, no problem. There's lots of other ways that you can share the story of doTERRA and you can help people with the oils. Do that. But if you are comfortable gathering with some people, I am here to tell you that in-person meetings and events and opportunities to connect are going to be far more effective than any Zoom class. Um, or any virtual situation. And gathering in a group is more powerful than gathering one-on-one -on -one because you get the social proof, right? When you are with a group of people and you're like, oh, she's like a normal person and she uses oils. I guess I could use oils too. There's something that happens that's a little different dynamic than you just sitting one-to-one -one with person. So I guess the disclaimer slash call to action is if you're not comfortable, you're not comfortable, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. But if you feel like, yeah, you could gather with some people and maybe you're just a little out of practice, this is me saying as your coach in doTERRA, do it, do it, it's time. Other people want it too. And we can all be awkward together, it's okay. So we wanna hear from you. If you wanna put it in the chat or if you want to come on camera, let's just hear some of the like uncomfortable, like blocks, fears, concerns. Why are you like feeling a little bit like not certain? Why don't you have three classes on your books right now? Talk to us about it. Tell us what's going on. Who wants to go first? You can put it in the chat. I think you muted yourself for a second, Erin. Oh yeah. You can uh, put it in the chat or turn your camera on and give us some of your feedback. Megan, please. Hey, um, so several different layers, all of which you've mentioned, <laughs> which is one is I feel exhausted um, and I'm just like scared to teach any kind of class. Like I just have a lot of fear around it and I'm like a little bit like my, my self-confidence has really dropped down because I haven't been doing it, you know? And so that same kind of awkwardness, which I loved your awkward dance. <laughs> You're like, well, well, ah. um, and, um, and then, yeah, like, you know, I have had some um, online classes and you, you know, you make the Evi or the Eventbrite and you, you know, tell people about it and, you know, maybe two people say they're going to come and then, oh, something came up and then they don't come. And then I, then part of me is like, phew, okay, good. Cause I don't really feel like teaching, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's a bad feeling or sometimes, you know, I've been there where I felt like that one person actually shows up and guess what they enroll. So, I mean, like, so there's the full gamut, but I'm just saying, those things. I, I don't know also about like getting people together. I have two, two great spots to get people together outside or even on my back porch or, 
you know, where there's, it's, it's warm now. We can meet outside for, you know, I feel like it's just a good time to do that. And we do need that connection, but I just, so those are the things I have fear and tiredness and confidence is dropped. Thank you for naming all of that, Megan. I appreciate yeah. it. And I understand right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> what else? You can put it in the chat if you don't want to come on. Twitter. Totally put it in the chat. All transparency and it will help someone else. Someone else is thinking the same thing that you're thinking. Do you want to share yours, Florence? Yeah, I'll go ahead. So my, my concern is uh, with the uptick of what's happening in the world right now, I'm a little still back to that concern about spreading whatever is happening um, and trying to find the, the correct way to actually invite people and perhaps without not being judgmental, but just saying, you know, if you're not feeling well or you've been exposed, please, you know, uh, maybe not come. We can schedule later a one-on-one, -on -one, that kind of a thing. Um, I desperately, I love in-person classes and I just light up when I start to teach. And so um, I love it. It's my passion. And I'm finding that, um, but then there's that little fear and um, like, uh, I think it was, uh, who was it? She's gone. Uh, said she had, you know, I have a, I have a building outside of my property that could be totally used for classroom. Um, and, you know, with plenty of airflow and all that stuff. So uh, I'm trying to work on talking myself into it. It's going to be okay. Um, I had a little scare this last week. Uh, Friday, I got exposed to somebody who the next day let me know that she had came down with COVID. So immediately I went back to uh Melissa, that nasty tasting Melissa under the tongue every day. And now it's been a week, almost a week. So nothing has happened. But, um, you know, it's, it's just the reminder that there's that little scary thing that can come and get you at an inopportune time. So, um, Thanks, And I know Virginia is my, you know, my teammate. And, and we've been talking about doing classes together. And we actually had one scheduled for this week, and then I got a little gun shy about it. So I was very open with her and told her how I was feeling, and she was, you know, accepting of it. And so uh, I think, you know, just try to figure out gracefully how to approach it so that you don't have that fear that somebody's going to come back and say, oh, I went to your class and I got this, that kind of thing. Of course, we'll give them tools of what they're supposed to be using, and I can be testimony of what really is helping. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, oh, thank you. I'm sure other people feel that way too. Anyone else want to throw something in the pot? Yeah, Megan. Sorry. So I just realized also. Um, I've become accustomed to the online and part of me really likes it because in person, it's really fun and people start talking and they, especially if they, if they know each other and then all of a sudden you end up with like a two and a half hour class or whatever. And there's something I really like about like, there's the image, that's what we're talking about. Like I just, when we hand out our, our pieces of paper people are reading through that and so anyway any suggestions for helping people stay on task like I've been the, you know I've kind of given the talk like so we'll have questions more at the end and la 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 but still things happen anyway that's one thing I realized would be awesome to get advice so classes going too long are going over scheduled you know yeah, I'm just gonna go in sideways <laughs> I told a, I taught a class 
a number of times before the pandemic hit. And one of the things I did was I was developing community in our group. And so then there was all that chit chatting. And then we, you know, and then we would get back on track. But it's it's really it's a hard line there. But um, I think you know when you teach them how to, you know, share their stories, that is so valuable, and we need to listen to them. So, um, but that chit chatting, I know what she's talking about. I've had it happen. And you get, it's very. You have to bring negative. an air horn. An air horn. You just blow yeah. it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, we're going to talk about this. I, and I have a softer voice. So then when I raise my voice, then they start, they go, oh, she's talking. She wants us to listen. <laughs> so that's kind of how I've done it. Great. Yeah. Okay, good. We have a good list going. Um, and Tay, I put yours down, the feeling ghosted when you follow up with people. Anyone else? Have anything they want to throw into this before Haley and I start talking about it? Lori misses hands on. No. Okay, so what I'm hearing, and Haley, you can chime in to what you're hearing, is first I'm hearing that there could be a foundational burnout going on, which I totally feel. And it's expected, right? We've been through a very stressful time. Um, some of us have gotten COVID, so we have the extra stuff on our immune system. And so burnout is real. I'm also hearing that just like awkwardness of getting back and being social and learning how to be around people again. I'm hearing that we've come to like Zoom classes because they're shorter and you can just click the end button right? Instead of having people hanging about in your room. I'm also hearing, <clears throat> being concerned about it actually being safe to gather and wanting to know how to make it safe. Is that what you're hearing, hearing Haley? Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. And of so, course, yeah, the fear around being like perfect because we haven't had practice, practice, you know, doing it right. Am I doing the same thing that I used to do? Am I being effective? Yeah. No. So, I mean, I think we all need to do a little internal check right now for our own burnout. And that internal check is how much water am I drinking every day? And your goal is twice your body weight in ounces. So that's where I'll, I always start when I feel burnt out or run down. Am I drinking enough water? Uh, am I using my oils? Is there anyone else here like me where I stop using oils when I get like in a bad mood? <laughs> like the one time I'm supposed to use oils, that's when I forget that happened to Megan. So am, am I using oils? Like am I being a product of the product? I feel burnt out. And sometimes we won't want to teach a class if we feel burnt out because we're like, what am I teaching people? Am I taking the LLV? Am I on the LLV? That'll give you a big uptick in energy. And then other things that can help burnout. There's actually a really great book called Burnout. And um, it's two sisters who wrote it and they give some really great advice. One thing is exercise, like really intense exercise, like going for a run or rowing, doing something where you really get your heart rate up can help you to avoid burnout. Um, if you have someone in your life that you can hug for 60 seconds, a 60 second hug. And if you don't have a person, maybe you have a dog or a cat, but a 60 second hug throughout the day can bring your stress levels back down. So it's just always coming back to our foundational uh, support system of like, am I a product of the product? Am I doing what needs to be done to take care of my own burnout? Um, Haley, do you want to talk to one of those other subjects? No, I think that was really great that you brought up burnout, but I think also the fear around safety, I think is a really important one to address. I think giving people the option and the clarity and the transparency around coming, like you addressed Florence, 
I typically have been reaching out to people and saying, I miss my people. I miss gathering with you. I want a sense of community again. So I would love to have you over if for any reason, just be transparent. If for any reason bef- leading up to the class, if you feel like you've been exposed or you feel like it's an unsafe event for you to attend, let me know because I have some online classes scheduled. And then I just have ones already on the books that they can still not miss out on the information or miss out on the education or miss out on what they were hoping to gain from that class that they were coming to versus just don't come because you're going to come and get everybody sick, you know, just giving them the option of that. Cause like people really do want to gather. They really do. And you can be super open about it's an open, I mean, you come at your own risk. I tell people that if you, if you're coming, it's at your own risk. And I just want everybody to have that sense of community. So if for any reason you feel unsafe coming, please reach out to me and I will send you an invitation for an online class. Cause I would just hate for you to miss out on it just because you, you aren't able to come in person. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of what they do at my kid's school. It's just like every, almost every week we get an email that says, please don't send your child to school if they have any symptoms blah, 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 blah. And, and that's, you know, that's it. We've just come to a place in our world where that's the rule. Don't, don't come be around people if you have symptoms. But I think, you know, you could ask yourself, Florence, what would I need to feel safe to go to an event? And then line that out as what you're offering your people, because you're going to attract people who are just like you. And whatever you feel you need to feel safe going to an event, they're going to need. Yes, Virginia, I see your hand up, please. Yes. Okay. Well, along with everything that has been said, um, I got started in doTERRA right in the midst of COVID. So I've never had a class. I've never been to a class online or in person. Um, I am the kind of person who um, learns better by seeing. I love these classes, you know, that I'm learning a lot. um, But I have a fear of, I mean, I've talked with family and friends and I've shared um, oils with people. um, But I would like to if possible, if somebody's having an online class, I'd like to just be invited just as an observer um, or in person if you're if it's close, you know, fairly close by. Um, you know, if that's a possibility, um, that would that would greatly help me to build my confidence. I've been in programs before where I've done um, you know classes for people. Um, like Pampered Chef, I've done Mary Kay, no more. I'm doing doTERRA now. Um, but um, yeah, so I I know how to do a class, but I need to see it. Yeah. Virginia, have you watched our archive of online classes on the website? The actual class, an actual class? There, it's virtual classes, but with the PowerPoint and everything. Well, what do I do now that I've got the oils? Those types of classes, I've oh. watched those. No, we have a whole bunch of intro, like the basically the intro class. Let me get you the link. Okay, thank you. You can see lots of other people do it. Um, so you get like the different styles. Okay. But I totally understand. Yes, you need to see it happen in person. Um, so I put that link in the chat. You can grab that. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, Haley, should we dive into our topics that we want to discuss tonight? Yes. For certain. Number one, just start something like reach out to somebody, just invite somebody to come and hang out. Just start. We're all like, we have all of the stuff that comes up for every one of us. It's going to shut down just starting. Like there's a stop sign in front of every single decision that we make. Just start, reach out to one person. I'm gonna have, if I were to have a wellness workshop, would you come? Like I miss my people. I seriously, for me personally, I miss being around big, large groups of people. I love in-person classes. It is like 
my passion, my bread and butter. It's my favorite place to be is in front of a group of people educating and interacting. And so when I reach out to people, I'm not trying to fuel the hesitancy for them. I'm mostly like, I just miss gathering. So whatever that looks like for you, maybe it's a creative workshop where it only tiny bit has to do with oils and takes the pressure off for you. And you're just bringing friends together, give people something to do, to bring, to collaborate so that it just feels easy and fun. We don't want this to feel stressful. We don't want it to feel overwhelming. If you're already feeling exhausted, we don't want to add to the exhaustion of having to relearn how to do something after a pandemic. Just think of something to bring people together. Erin had a great idea earlier when we were talking. You could have somebody come, let's say five people. We're going to do a five person workshop and you're going to have 10 minutes each to teach us something that you love. Doesn't even have to be about oils. Somebody could come teach how to cook a dish in 10 minutes. Somebody could talk about oils for 10 minutes. Somebody could talk about gardening for 10 minutes, whatever their passion project is for 10 minutes. And it's just like your friends and your people getting together, teaching each other. Like it's just the the greatest way to learn and to interact. And I think that it really brings back that sense of community that we've been missing with our friends and with our network and with our community. So I think that that's like a really cool idea. So the first thing we wanna touch on how do you even schedule a class? Does anybody even remember how to schedule a class? <laughs> I'm like, what's a class? Where do we even start? So scheduling a class, just come up with a date. First thing, just put it on your calendar. This is the date that I'm going to have a class. If nobody shows up and nobody wants to come, who cares? Just put the date on the calendar of having a class. Your second thing is an if and a would. If I would you. It's so simple. If I had a class on Tuesday, the 27th, would you want to come? That, that's all you have to ask people. And they can say yes, they can say no, they can say that date doesn't work for me. Great. Do you want me to let you know when the next time I have a workshop? Because I just missed gathering and I would love to have you come. Any of those statements, just if I had something, would you show up? Those are just great ways to start inviting people. And it's just a way to talk to people. That's how I would talk to anybody. I mean, I talk to my husband that way. If I start dinner, will you stop at the grocery store on the way home? Like we just communicate with people that way. If I do this, will you do that? It's, it's a really great communicative strategy. So I encourage you to use that. Just if I have a workshop, if I have a gathering, if I have a barbecue, if I was planning something, would you in be interested in that? And then you'll get your consensus too from the different people that might be interested. Like, thank God you reached out to me. I've been sitting on my couch waiting for somebody to pull me out. I mean, that was me. <laughs> Somebody come and get me. <laughs> I did that recently with one of my mom friends. I said, if I had a spa night for moms, would you come? And she was like, oh my God, yes, I need that. So you can also play around with what you call it. <clears throat> some people might resonate with class. Some people might resonate with workshop. Some people might resonate with party. I know my mom friends need a spa night. So that's what I called it. Okay, so yeah, let's just schedule it. And I love that I, what Kaylee is saying because you could just start talking about it with people. You haven't even fully committed. It's like, if I, if I were to have a class on this day at this time, would you wanna come? And that'll kind of give you that confidence. That's a really key point about confidence. When we're not, when we don't feel confident, it's because we haven't had anything that affirms our confidence. So if you wanna start feeling confident about teaching classes or inviting people or using oils, the first step is to actually do it. And when you do those little steps, then your confidence starts to build. So the next thing that we wanted to talk about is how do you make sure people come? Like this is a common thing that I hear and it's something I've experienced where it's like, I invited all these people and they said they were coming and nobody came and it's so frustrating. So there are a couple of little things you can do to make sure people come. What Haley is talking about is kind of your first step using the if I would you is great. And then if the person says yes, you've, you've gained their commitment. But even if the person says yes, we live in a busy life. People have a lot of things going on. A lot of people have COVID brain. I know I have COVID brain. I will just like forget something or forget what I was saying or even. So I need reminders. Everybody needs reminders. So you want to give people 
two very specific reminders. One is the day before your event. So a text message is totally fine that just says, hey, I, um, you know, you said you wanted to come to my class. It's tomorrow. I just wanted to remind you. And when I remind them, I say something that puts them in the headspace that they're going. So like, hey, when you come tomorrow, would you mind bringing a bag of popcorn? Or hey, when you come tomorrow, you can park behind my car. It's the red one in the driveway. It doesn't really matter what you say. It's just that you're painting this picture for them. It helps their brain connect the dots with, okay, I'm going to Virginia's house tomorrow. I'm gonna park behind her red car. Okay. And then the day of, about like two hours before the event, you send another text reminder. Can't wait to see you at the event. You might in this one say something like, I have a gift for you. And your gift is just whatever, the, a little roller bottle or wild orange, or it's a cookie or something. It doesn't really matter what the gift is. So those little reminder messages can really help, but also you're, you want to invite more people than you want to come. So if you want five people there, I would invite 20 because it's usually, it breaks it in half. You invite 20, 10 say they will come, five actually end up coming. So you get to back into whatever number that you want. Um, but ultimately you can't control people, right? They're either gonna come or they're not gonna come. So I always remember that little affirmation, which is some will, some won't, so what? someone's waiting. And it kind of speaks to what Taya is talking about feeling ghosted. I understand that feeling of being like, I invited you to my class and you said you're coming and you didn't come. And like making it mean something about me or them. And you really have to not take it personally. So what? Some will, some won't, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. And you just move into inviting people to your next class. I've had so many classes where no one came. And I just read my modern essentials book or I invited people to my next class, but you really have to manage those disappointments. Um, do your best to ensure people coming, but some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Okay. Haley, do you want to take the super simple so you don't get exhausted? Yeah, afterwards? Uh, totally. Um, I was just going to add to the same day thing that I really, a same day reminder that has been really helpful for me, when I remind people on the same day, I never say, hey, remember we have a class tonight. Because then sometimes people will be like, oh, dang, I forgot something came up. I'll always say, I'm so excited to see you tonight. And then, I mean, if somebody texted me that, even if a million things had already come up, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Like, I don't want to let them down. I'll figure it out and I'm going to be there. So just, I always say, I'm super excited to see you tonight. And then the other thing I was going to say in regards to the ghosting, because I do want to touch on that because it's happened to all of us is anytime, you know, do you ever feel like a crazy stalker afterwards too? You're like, well, now what do I do? Do I like, how many times do I stalk them? Do I ask, do I keep asking them if they want to come? Like, if I don't want to be that weird, crazy oil lady that they like run <laughs> every time they see you. So I always reach out to them and I'm like, I missed you at the class. Would you like me to let you know of a future one? Because then they give you permission, yes or no. And I don't keep stalking them. Like if it's not a priority for you and you're totally not interested, no big deal. But I do want to let you know of the next one if that is something that you're interested in. And so I'm just super clear about that. They might be like, no, I actually, I feel bad, but I'm totally like not into it. And I value that because then I'm not the weird stalker who's stalking you when you don't want to be stalked. We need consensual stalking here in this business. So when you're keeping it simple, this is my biggest tip. Don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be super formal. You don't have to have like a giant spread of snacks for people. All you have to do is have oils, have like water out and just teach people three things. How do they use oils and how do they get them in their house? And what are they, how are they effective? Like just the top things about essential oils. That's it. It's like so simple, casual. Don't like get all dressed up in like your business suit. Be casual because you want people to show up and be like, oh my gosh, I can teach a class. She's in her sweats and her slippers. I mean, don't be like a hobo, but so like <laughs> give people the permission to just like chill and chat outside casually around a barbecue because everybody needs the education. It doesn't matter the setting. If you're sharing the information and it's of value, people will take that. 
they're not going to want to duplicate or to do what you do. If it's a huge, you roll in with like your wheelie bag. And the very first class I went to, this the person who taught it, rolled in with like a suitcase, like a big checked carry on size bag opened it and it was like a fold out thing and like all these things I was like I could never do what you do that is so much stuff and it was like this entire beautiful presentation but I was like gosh you had to have been prepping for this for like a month that is nutty and so the next one I went to we like sat around on a couch and she like passed around some oranges and I was like oh this is cool I could do this this is like super chill and so it ends up being like you attract how you are. So you're not going to attract a lot of people who need all the time in the world to prepare for a class. Just keep it super simple. And when it is simple, it's not overwhelming and exhausting at the end. It just feels like fun. You're just hanging out with your people, talking about oils, talking about how not to put them in your eyeballs. And it's just like fun and silly. And it's, it's just a great experience. So don't overthink it. You know what, Haley, you're bringing up such an important point here, which is like people these days, so I study marketing a lot and we've come to a point in marketing where people crave authenticity. They don't want to see the polished version of yourself. They don't want to see you like with, you know, everything perfect, your house totally clean. They want to see who you really are. And we're in the business of making people feel heard and making people feel like we're connecting with them. You actually want people to feel the same way you feel when you're hanging out with your best friend. And if I were to invite Haley over to my house, Haley and I are very good friends. I would, I would not clean it. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't care. Like Haley could come over to my house and I could be in my jammies and whatever. And we would sit on the couch and we'd have a great time. And I would never feel like she's judging me and she would never expect me to have everything perfect. So I realize you can't exactly replicate that with strangers or near strangers, but that's kind of the vibe you want to bring is this is, you're just inviting your friends over to have a class and either it's at your house or it's outside, or maybe you meet at a park or, you know what, maybe like you meet at a bar for beers. Like if that's your style, maybe you meet at the dog park. Hey, I'm going to meet at the dog park, bring your dog and we're going to talk about oils. But the vibe you want to have to keep it simple so you're not exhausted is completely authentically you. Be completely authentically you and have an event that you would have with your best friends. Because when you bring people into that feeling that you have when you're with a really good friend, that's what makes them go, oh, I want to hang out with this person. I want to learn from this person. This feels so real and authentic and I don't feel sold to or salesy. So I think that's also key. I used to be exhausted after classes because I would put on a front. I would be like, okay, I have to put on an outfit that is like professional and clean my house from top to bottom and make sure the snacks are all perfect and my makeup is perfectly done and then have this like beautiful speaking voice and make sure that I was just perfect. And then people would leave my class and be like, oh my gosh, it's so exhausting. And now I just, I'm just myself. I just hang out with my friends and I teach them about oils. And I use a little bit of prep to make sure that they come. So I love that, Haley. I love that you just said that too. I was just going to bring up, so if you feel nervous, I know Megan, you had brought up a couple of fears about having people come over and it feels awkward and we all feel awkward. If you put the elephant in the center of the room, it's not awkward anymore. When people are all gathered and you're like, listen, people, I haven't spoke in front of anybody, but my cat in like two years. So please bear with me. If I feel I like, I'm like nervous up here and I might say all some crazy stuff, but you're my friends. So just like, don't judge me. Okay. Don't judge me right now then it's not weird. It's only weird if you're like trying to keep your composure and you're like dying inside, like let it out. I'm dying inside right now. Everyone, I want you to know, how do you regulate? So yeah. it's, just put it out there, leave a seat for the elephant in the room. Yeah. We're all going through the same pandemic. We're all going through the same experience. We have different perspectives, but we're all in this together. Okay, so at your event, you do want people to purchase oils, right? That would be ideal is that they come to the event and they love what they learn. And so they want to get oils in their, in, in their life. Now you don't have to do a really like fancy clothes or make it all salesy or anything. It can be very casual. The key here is that you ask people. 
So when your class, your presentation is over, you've passed around a few oils, you've talked about the three things that Haley's talking about, just make sure you ask this very simple question. Would you like to learn how to get these oils in your house? And people are gonna nod their heads like, yeah, yeah, I, I like it. And so you have permission from the room. And from there, I would recommend that you have a very simple script memorized. And it's so simple, we're gonna learn it right now. So when people go, yeah, I wanna learn, then you say, okay, there are three ways to purchase from doTERRA. The first way is retail, but nobody's gonna do that unless you're in a doctor office or a spa. The second way is wholesale. And this is kind of like Sam's Club or Costco, you get 25% off. Third way, and it's the only way I do it, is Beyond's wholesale. And that's with a kit and getting on our loyalty rewards program. So now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna talk to you about your personal needs and we will pick out the best kit for you. That's it, that's the end of your close. Now you have that recorded. So when you get this recording, go re-listen to that and write it down. Practice it in the mirror, record yourself doing it. That is totally a script, I didn't make that up. That actually comes from like Elise Shedevy or something tweaked by Tiffin. It's just, I've practiced it and I practiced it and that way I can say it. So say I do have that class at the dog park or the bar or the park and it's like the people there don't even know it's a class. We're just hanging out and I'm passing around oils. I can easily go into, so would you like me to show you how you can get these oils? And they're all, yeah. Okay, well, there's three ways you can do it. You know, you can do retail, but don't do that. That's too expensive. You can do wholesale, it's like Sam's Club or Costco, or you can do it the way I do it, which is beyond wholesale. It's really cool. You get a kit, you get the best price, and you can do the loyalty rewards program. Would you like me to show you some of the kits? So it comes off really natural, really authentic, and you can do it anywhere. That's how you facilitate people actually purchasing their oils. Then from there, I recommend you strike while the iron is hot. If you can avoid just letting someone go off without actually signing up, that's better. And now we have the great link generator. So you can help them pick out their kit and then you create a link for them, text it to them right then and there, have them fill it out right while you're sitting together and then they have their account going. Anything to add to that, Haley? No, I think that that is super awesome. And this story might be, might resonate with some of you. When I was first teaching classes, I was so scared to actually help people get oils because I didn't want to be like a salesy person. Like years ago, you people would be like, yeah, I want to hear about it. You tell them and they're like, great, I want this one. And you're like, are you sure? I mean, do you really want it? And then you're just like weird. Like you don't want to sell them on something. And I remember this lady was asking me very specific questions about some stuff that could help her with her skin. And we narrowed it down to like the perfect thing for her. And then I was like, great, well, we can talk about how we could get that. And I like never actually helped her get her stuff or enroll her or anything. And like a week later I saw her and she was like, you gave me such valuable information. Like, thank you so much for your time. And I was like, yeah, totally. And she was like, but you didn't help me with my problem. And I was like, <sighs> like everything inside of me, like deflated. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you told me all these amazing things that could help me. And then you didn't even tell me how to get it. And then forever after that, I was like, okay. <laughs> people need this. And we're like walking around with these like secrets in our pockets. We're like, mm, you can't have that. Sorry. I'm going to tell you all about the amazing things, but no, not for you. So I think it's, that was really, really helpful for me. And never have I not told somebody how the heck to get oils in their house because people need them and people want them. Yeah. And if you don't know how to use the link generator, learn, because it is, makes it really easy. You just text them a custom link You've put it together with their shopping cart. They get it right on their phone. They can put all their information in and it's right done in there for them. Okay, Haley, tell us how you would back into an income goal. Say I told you I wanted to make $400 on my first class. Those are so great. So go ahead. No, yeah, just how question? do I make that happen? I want to make $400 at my first class. What do I do? Perfect. So you can create either an income goal specific to $400, and then you know what, how many kits you need to help people get to, to get that income goal, right? We know what the commission payout is for each kit, and this is how many you want to help people get. Or you can also offer booking classes off of classes. Are those the two ways that you would suggest having an income goal covered in your class? Yeah, for sure. 
And so when you do that, you can break this down. And so when I'm going into a class and there's say five people coming and I need to make $400, I know that if they enroll with a natural solutions kit or let's say a home essentials kit for simplicity, you're going to get probably $40 commission from that. So you know that you want to help half of those people get those kits and then you want to book some classes off of that. So you want to help those people gather and collaborate with their friends and then you could be teaching for them. So those people, I guarantee every person that comes to your class is going to, I'm merging the two together, but most people who come to your class are going to want to gather and give other people in their life who've either been struggling, isolated in this pandemic experience, gather and be together or experience what they just experienced. Because what you're going to find this, I taught an in-person class actually a week and a half ago, and I noticed that just the people who came, the energy around them shifted. Like it wasn't even about being, it probably had a little bit to do with gathering with people, but the oils work their magic on their own. Like you don't even have to do anything. They just do it themselves. And every person in that room felt different. And they all were saying the same things. We need to get our people together to experience what we just did. Like we put those oils on and it felt amazing. It felt like I could breathe for the first time in a year. And so many different like emotional things can happen for people. So even just getting people together and then sharing that with their friends, you can go to somebody else's barbecue and sit down in your sweats and your PJs and give them that same beautiful experience of breathing for the first time. So I think that those are just really great. And don't beat yourself up if you don't get that. Just make sure to follow up with people. Make sure that their needs are met. Don't go into it attached to that outcome. It'll wreck you in a class. Like I have to get these people to sign up and I have to make this goal. Really what your goal should be is to help them get their needs met. However that is, if they have a need, you have a solution for it. And that's the only way I look at it. Just help them find a solution. And there's someone in their life who's got a need that needs a solution for it. And you have the answer. So you're just like the gateway to helping people change their lives. Did you want to add something to that, Erin? Yeah, I think I think what you said is so great. And it's just really important to know your calculation. You get a 20% commission check when you enroll someone. So just have that in mind. What's your favorite kit to enroll people with? Is it the Home Essentials kit? Is it the Daily Habits kit? And then know that every person who enrolls, you're going to make a 20% commission. So if you have this, you know, goal of, yeah, I'd really like to earn $300 a month, uh, $300 a week from doTERRA, then you can start to learn, well, I need five people at my class and two of them need to enroll with this kit and I need to do five of those classes a month. Just good for you to know those numbers. It's great what Haley is saying that don't be like so attached to it that you're devastated when you don't hit the goal, but have your roadmap so that you have an idea of how many people you would like to see at the class, what kit you wanna sell. That's really key because when you know what kit you wanna sell, you're kind of teaching to that kit. So instead of jumping all over the place with like all kinds of oils, you could be really clear that I love for people to start with the daily habits kit. So I'm gonna make sure I talk about the LLV and frankincense and lemon and some of the key oils so that when I show them the kits, it makes the most sense for them to get that kit. So we only have, um, you know, so many people that we know and that we can invite to our classes. So it's really, really important that you get in the habit of booking classes off of classes. So I just make it kind of a non-negotiable that at the end of every class, I always ask, who here would like to host this exact class at your house? And I give them some kind of present. Like if you host a class, I'm gonna give you a free diffuser. And I have my schedule ready so that I can immediately say, you know, I have Saturday this month, I have Tuesday night this month, and I have Thursday night this month available. Which one do you want? I don't just say, yeah, when do you wanna book your class? Because when you give people this like nebulous, so many options, they don't take action. But if I am talking to you and you want to, you want to host a class for me and I say, okay, well, I could do this Saturday or I could do next Friday, which one works best for you? It kind of just hones them in on the decision process. Um, 
and it makes it a lot easier for them to decide. So that's key. Always ask who wants to host a class and have your calendar pre-organized so that you're clear about what you're offering. And then don't really give them more than two or three options. Haley, are you ready to talk about how to find your next leaders in classes? Yeah. So when you are closing your class or finishing your class, right, we're asking if anybody non-negotiable, like Erin said, if they want to host a class just like that. But when you're in a class, one of our favorite things to ask people is there, we kind of touch on, are you talking about the script of the three people? Definitely mentioning the business for sure. Yeah. Um, I also, you could talk about that part and then I'll come and talk about this, but I find a lot of my leaders once they're hosting the class. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. So when, a, when somebody is already hosting a class, so they're booking that class with you, they're obviously already excited to share essential oils with other people. And I have a conversation with them about what that looks like and what the potential earning incomes are with doTERRA. And do they want to do something like what I'm doing? I always ask people that if any of you are interested ever in standing in front of a group of friends or sitting at a barbecue or at a bar, at a park and telling people about these amazing essential oils, we need to talk. Like stay after for just a few minutes and I'd love to share with you what that looks like. And then usually I will book a class with them that way. But if you just tell people, this is what I do. Like I just sit here and tell people, about, I didn't fly here on a broom. I drove in a car. I'm not like a weird person. You get all that stuff out of the way. It's so great for people to hear that it's an option for them. They can do that. They can stand up there and just talk about essential oils with people. It's great. So I do it a little bit different. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really bring it up with them until they've hosted and there's all these sales on the table. So I'll be like, so they say yes to hosting a class. And their friends come and everybody's left and I'm sitting down and I'm like, so you sold $2,000 at this party or this class and doTERRA is sending a $400 check to me. However, I'd rather you get the check. Do you want to learn how this business works? And then maybe you could be the one who takes all these, um, who takes care of all these customers, gets the check. So I kind of like to get them the proof um, and then offer them the opportunity. Yeah, go ahead, Taya. So you are not doing the paper, or you're doing the paper sheets with the enrollments. You're not getting a laptop out and enrolling people right now and then, and then letting them go. Yeah, so in a class, I have found that it's best to get the paper sheets because People aren't going to like wait around, you know, I can't like sit with every single person and help them enroll. And if I have those paper sheets, then I can do this conversation with the host. Yeah, great clarification. But it's very, it's very, um, well, first of all, it does what Virginia was talking about. When someone hosts a class and you teach it, now they've seen a class and they're in their mind like, oh, I could do that if you keep it super simple. And then you're coming to them and being like, look, you already sold all this stuff and there's this check coming. I can take it, but I'd rather you take it. Would you like to you know, learn what that means? And they usually are like, yes, I want to learn what that means. Um, and every once in a while they're like, no, I'm, I just hosted for you. It's your thing. Like, and then I'm like, okay, cool. No problem. So yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we have for you. Are there any questions uh, or concerns or things that we didn't address? We can spend a few more minutes doing that. I think the key thing that Haley and I are trying to get across is let this be fun. Let it be easy. We're all so stressed anyways that we don't need to bring more stress to our life. And these products have the ability to help with that, if we can be an example. So let's do the inner work first to manage our burnout and manage our stress, use our products so that we are feeling our best and then go have fun and teach people about oils. You just have to learn a couple of key little tips about how to make sure they're reminded properly, how to do a close, 
how to invite people to host. And from there, just keep it super simple and have fun. You're welcome, Virginia. You're welcome, Megan. Awesome. Anything in closing, Haley? No, that was super fun. And I love that you're all here. And I thank you so much for being transparent with your concerns so that we could all collaborate and come together. Thank you very much. Yes, thank oh, you. Yeah. Marilyn, I want to make sure Marilyn gets her question answered. So I'm just going to stick on here. Can you come on camera, Marilyn, and help me understand? Or just unmute? Well, it says that it's disabled, but yes, I can talk. It's like, I, Aaron, I'll get people who, you know, and I've been doing classes. I, I, I never really stopped doing classes. It was whatever, you know, through the pandemic, it was, I did them on Zoom. I did them in person. It was whatever people were comfortable with doing. But I would get people that would be so interested in doing what I do but then, you know, there's no follow through on their part. And initially I would get beyond excited and then so let down. And the saying that you mentioned earlier, some will, some won't, so what, someone's waiting, like I mentioned in the chat has totally changed my perspective on how I look at this, but it's, I, I don't know, obviously it's me. It's something that I'm doing getting to get these or not doing, I guess I should say to get these people to, to commit to wanting to be a leader, to want to build. And for some people that I've had, it's been too slow for them. So I was like, yeah, I don't think this is for me, but I don't know. I mean, obviously you are tremendously successful. So what is, what is your advice what is your ticket what's your you know secret secret sauce as they say yeah so i don't expect anyone to do anything i actually think that um the people who really go far in a business like this are unicorns and that's okay because what we actually need is we need every single one of our customers to earn a couple hundred dollars if every single one of our customers learns how to share the products and sign up their friends, a couple of family members, just a collection of customers, if we're lucky elite, then they're going to be happy because they love the products. They're going to have some income. And what is it? It's 52 elites and your presidential diamond. Is that the right calculation, Haley? I always forget that one. Yeah. It's 52 elites in your presidential diamonds. So that's the only difference between someone who goes on to the leadership ranks in doTERRA and someone who doesn't is they aren't trying to get everyone to be a leader. Now, I know that my belief goes maybe a little against what some other leaders in doTERRA might say or some other trainers might say. But if I had a secret sauce, it's that I've never expected anyone to do anything. I've run my business as though. It doesn't matter what anybody else does because I know where I'm going. And my goal is to get an oil in every single home and make sure that people know how to use it and to make sure that everyone knows how to take advantage of the commissions doTERRA is sending out. The doTERRA income opportunity is very simple. Sign someone up with a kit and you get a 20% commission check. And so I want every single one of my customers to at least sign up a few friends. So I guess it's that I just don't really look for leaders and they, then they show up leaders show up and they do it regardless of what you do. There's a saying that the right person, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So I embody that. I can't say the right thing. I can't say the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. Like I don't actually matter in this equation. My only job is to teach people about essential oils and to teach them how to make that 20% commission check. From there, whatever they do is totally up to them and has nothing to do with me, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep like doing my thing and 52 elites, 
and it's presidential diamond. And elite is just someone who shared the product with all their friends and family. I think uh, an elite, so $3,000 a month, 30 people ordering $100 a month. So if you've got someone that shares with a few friends and family and it duplicates like that, like everybody shares with a few friends and family, you can become an elite machine. Three elites, your silver. Three silvers, your platinum. Four silvers, your diamond. So I don't know if that helps, Marilyn, but it's the like mindset shift or hack that I have for my own brain so that I never get frustrated with people or I never get like upset that someone says they're going to do something. Um, there's another network marketing trainer out there and I love what he says. He says, treat everyone like they're your next presidential diamond, but don't expect anyone to ever do anything. Oh, I love that. No, that's all very, very helpful. And I appreciate that. Good. Karen, it doesn't need to be a kit to get the 20%. Right. But you're not going to have results with the oils if you don't have a kit. I was just talking to someone yesterday who has COVID and she's not on my team, but she has oils. And I said, do you want some oil recommendations, you know, just to help you with your symptoms? And she's like, sure. And I'm, I say, do you have celery seed? Do you have purify? Do you have eucalyptus? Do you have the turmeric dual caps? These are all things that like are so important for that. And no, she didn't have any of those because she just likes the oils. She just likes how they smell. And she got like a couple of blends. The way that you really find the power in these oils is when you have a kit. And when you're on the loyalty rewards program and you have this like arsenal of oil. So I tend to just focus my intention on, I'm not trying to sell people anything other than kits. And then I'm just trying to teach them how to use their kit. And I'm trying to teach them why they want to collect three or four oils every month for the rest of their life. And then teach them how to use all of those oils. So yeah, you, you make 20% no matter what. You can even sell retail and make 25%. But getting people to order kits is the best for them and their journey with the oils. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions? Oh, Haley is giving you some good. Haley's the best with scripts. Yeah, it's like your first aid kit. You don't buy just one Band-Aid. It's so true. So, so true. And that's why doTERRA needs us. They need educators. These oils don't sell properly if they're just sitting on shelves. So if you just remind yourself that that's what you are as an educator to help people be truly empowered with these oils so that when something happens, they have the oils they need so they can go and take care of it. Haley and I were prepping for this call and we were like, can you imagine not having these oils? Like we forget, like we actually can't imagine. And there are so many people out there that don't have them and they don't know how to use them. And that's where we come in. So I think if we focus on that, it makes all the other stuff kind of like not be that important and fall away. Anything to add Haley in closing? No, that was great. Super fun. Cool. Thanks everybody. So I hope we all go get some classes on the books and we start helping people with these oils again. Have a great night, everyone.